All right, so when we're given a chemical equation like this, what we see here is we have two what? What kind of compounds are these? Oh, ionic compounds. Very good. These are two ionic compounds. It says aqueous in front of both of them. What does that mean? That they're in water? Yes, that they're in water, but it means more than that. It also means now that because they're ionic compounds in water, they're actually dissociated into their ions. All right? So a funny little joke that I will use every once in a while is I'll say, when I combine these two together, how much calcium chloride or potassium chloride do I have? How much potassium chloride? And you guys will think about it and wonder. But it, the answer is there's none. There's none. There's no potassium chloride in this reaction here. There's potassium ions and chloride ions. But none of those potassium chloride units are together. Okay? And that's what this aqueous sign needs to tell us when we see it. If it's a ionic compound and it says aqueous, it's dissociated into its ions. So when we see a chemical equation like this, we see that two compounds, dissociating ions, come together and they form another compound. Oftentimes this compound, the new one that's formed, is the one is, is a new compound that's formed by combining the cation of one with the anion of the other. You see that? Yeah, I see that. And the result is an uh, insoluble compound because of the solubility rules, right? Um, these two elements come together, these two ions come together, and they will not be able to be dissociated by the water in solution. All right, so here's an example right here. Uh, number three, the salts containing chloride are generally soluble, but silver chloride is an exception. And then the other ion that is written here in our chemical equation is again aqueous, the other ionic compound is aqueous, therefore it's just potassium ions and nitrate ions. It becomes helpful for us to remember this very well and write what we call the ionic equation for this kind of a reaction. The ionic equation is every compound that is uh, ionic and says aqueous will be written down in its ionic form. This compound here, so chloride, it was solid, so it's not going to dissociate into ions. And so it maintains its form. All right. <clears throat> and this is called the ionic equation. Um, after we see the ionic equation, we can see that there's some compounds in this ionic equation that aren't undergoing any chemistry. Do you see them? Mm, I don't understand what you mean. Well, remember, chemistry is where it changes the kinds of bonds or interactions that it's undergoing. Here we have the silver ion, the nitrate ion, the potassium ion, and the chloride ion. The silver and the chloride are in ionic form here, and now they're in an ionic compound that's solid and insoluble. So that's a change in their chemistry. The nitrate ion, what does it do? Um, it just looks the same. That's right, along with the potassium ion. They don't change at all. And so we can write further write what's called a net ionic equation and get rid of what are called the spectator ions. And so in this reaction, we would say the net ionic equation is just the silver ion coming together with the chloride ion to form silver chloride. Because nitrate and potassium ions are spectating. They're there. They're necessary because you have to have, to get the silver ion, you have to have some compound that contains it to start off with. You can't get silver ion in a bucket or in a container. You can't get chloride ion by themselves in a container, right? Um, this is a, a notion that a lot of um, people don't understand. Ions don't exist by themselves uh, without a counter ion somewhere nearby, all right? Or something stabilizing its charge, right? Okay, so um, these kinds of reactions are called precipitate reactions. Uh, you see, you take a solution of one ionic compound, combine it with the solution of another ionic compound, and you make orange juice. Orange juice? Well, <laughs> not really. But you can see how this, these two colorless solutions turn a completely different color, and it's not uh, uh, a homogeneous mixture. It's heterogeneous in that you have a solid forming in there. Let's watch this video. 
two solutions that are um, translucent, transparent, and then we combine them together and we get this solid that's called a precipitate floating around in solution. Okay, so um, these precipitate reactions uh, follow a pattern. I have a chemical like AB, which is an ionic compound and it's aqueous, combining with another chemical, CD, it's an ionic compound, it's aqueous, and the products are going to be this cation, anion, cation, anion, cation going with this anion make AD and then this cation C going with B there all right one of these is going to be solid the other one might be solid sometimes well usually it's just aqueous though also and so we have this and we call this a metathesis reaction uh, where AB CD are ionic compounds in solution changing partners and finding new partners such that new chemistries can occur Okay, so notice here, here's an example of our A, B, C, D. See how A goes with D over here and C goes with B, all right? They find new partners. That's right, they transfer ions, right? Um, this one here is solid. These three are aqueous and we would like you to write the ionic equation. You think you can do that, Fred? I think I understand what the ionic equation is. All right, let's see if you can do it. Everybody at home, take your time. Push pause, write up <coughs> the ionic equation on a um, piece of paper, and then Fred and I will do it. All right, Fred, did you get it? Yeah, I think I got uh, a barium ion plus chloride ion plus lead ion plus nitrate ions on the left, and then lead chlorides together, barium and nitrate on the ends. Okay. Um, let me see. Is this what you mean? Barium ion? What's the barium ion? Uh, positive charge. Positive charge like that? Yeah. Chloride ion? Yeah, minus charge. Okay. And then what? Lead ion, positive charge. Nitrate ion, negative charge. Positive, nitrate. Like that? Yeah. And then lead chloride. It doesn't break up because it's solid. Okay, and then what? Barium ions and nitrate ions. Like this? Yeah. Okay, let's compare it to the answer here. Did you get it right? Yeah, I got it right. Well, almost, didn't you? Well, there's what? Barium ion isn't a plus one, is it? Oh, no, no, yeah, two plus on the barium ions. Okay, so I got to put two plus on there. Anything else? Um, why is there two in front of the chloride ion? All right, that's a coefficient saying that what? Two chloride ions, does that make sense? Yeah, why is that? Because we started up here with two chloride ions, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we need to make sure we see that there's two chloride ions there, and that's consistent with there being two chlorides on the right side as well. The lead ion needs the plus two charge as well, and the nitrate ion, what's wrong with there? Oh, we need two of those because they're, yeah, we started with two, so we need to have two. Very good. So we need to have two over there as well. Okay, so we have to make sure we identify the correct charge on the ions, and we have to make sure we identify the correct number of those ions with those coefficients. All right, do the next one here, Fred. Everybody at home, take a stab at it, and Fred will tell us how to do it. Okay, ready? Yeah, I got it. So this time I got two sodiums with a plus one charge. All right, two sodiums with a plus one charge. And then a carbonate with a plus minus two charge. Good. And then the calcium is a plus two charge. Calcium is a two plus charge. Two chloride ions. Um, and then the calcium carbonate doesn't break up. All right, it doesn't dissociate. It's a, uh, a solid. We're given that. We could also see that from our poly, um, our solubility rules, right? You have your solubility rules. Yeah, I have them. What's the rule? Well, number eight. Yeah, number eight talks about carbonates there. Okay. All right. So um, what's next here? Uh, two sodium ions and two chloride ions. That's right. That coefficient in front is showing us that I have two sodium chlorides. Therefore, I'm going to have two sodium ions and two chloride ions. 
Could I could I also write it like this? Is that okay? Oh, you can do that. Is it is is it sane to write something like that as it is to write it like that? Um, I don't know. It's not the same. And you can't write it like this. So what this is suggesting is that I have a chloride with another chloride, and this species here has a negative charge. What this is saying is that I have two of these chloride ions. And that's what we're trying to indicate. Because we would have two chloride ions um, if we had two sodium chloride units in solution. Okay, good job.